This is the Kerry team for today. It's quite familiar, isn't it? The big talking point, of course, is the selection of Ty Canelli at centre forward, which means Declan O'Sullivan transfers to the edge of the small rectangle to the exclusion of Tommy Welsh. What a difference former All-Star fullback Mike McCarthy is making since his return from retirement at number six. Equally impressive is 34-year-old Darrow Shea, who is still doing the business at centre field with Seamus Scanlon. Colin Cooper will start despite a hip injury scare, and the team captain is that man at top of the left wearing 15, Darren O'Sullivan. Here's possibly the most unexpected of this season's All-Ireland semi-finalists. The men from Mead can never be written off, especially following five victories on the trot. The Mead captain, Stephen Bray, returns after suspension to the left half forward position, while the full forward line also contains another Bray, younger brother David. Nigel Crawford and Brian Mead are a solid centre field combination, while Cormac McGuinness has been playing really well at centre back. But the vital question is can the Mead full back line cope with the speed, skill, and technique of the Kerry inside line? Kerry won the toss. They're playing from left to right. No wind, a little bit of mist, going to make conditions just a little bit slippy for the footballers. Kerry and their alternative strip of uh, Dark Navy, Mead and their alternative strip. First ball in first, Tommy Griffin. Well gathered, under a little bit of pressure from Brian Farrell. First free to the kingdom. Here's a man who's played wing back, centre field, centre back for his county. I can tell you as well that Pat O'Byrne and Stephen Bray have switched wings. Ball sent in by Mead captain, carries a little bit too much power. He was aiming for his younger bro brother, David. It didn't quite uh, work out for him, so it's a kick out for Dermot Murphy. Fires Mike McCarthy. And Kilcommon, just outside Killarney. Nice combination between Canelli and Walsh. Hefty shoulder. Lays it off as Dara O'Shea. Pumping this one in towards Anthony Miles. Here's the coach. There's panic in County Mead. There's a penalty going to be given. Gerardo Canova has his arms outstretched. And it is a penalty after two and a half minutes play in this semi final. The ball dropped by Anthony Moyles are not cleared. And uh, there was a little bit of consternation. Yeah, skid, it's, it's the mist on the ground, the rain, it's, it's, the ball is skidding, we've seen a few skid wide already. He had it under control, spilled it, the Gooch got the lovely, it, the important first touch, paid it away, penalty. Well, you said in your scene set about Paddy O'Rourke's ability to stop shots. Here's Darren O'Sullivan, tucks it away. And Darren O'Sullivan will be pleased because he seemed to slip himself as he was taking the kick. And I'm pretty sure he'll be relieved. Here's the kick, there's the slip, and there's the ball in the back of the net. Uh, once you keep it low, you have a chance. Watch the Gooch's touch here with the right foot, and then he's caught, just pulled back there. That's a penalty. Knocked down by Brian Mead, gathered by Joe Sheridan. Sheridan of the drop kick and the booming uh, point scoring ability. Here's Brian Farrell. Hits it. There it is. The first score from Mead in this All Ireland semi final after 14 minutes of play. And he just commented on the fact that it was taking a long time for the Royals to get on the scoreboard. They're on their way. He's dropping in, the ball is loose, it's O'Sullivan, saved by Paddy O'Rourke. Here's Darren O'Sullivan, he slips, but he manages to kick the ball over the bar. Knocked away by Tommy Griffin, followed by Joe Sheridan. Nice ball inside, just seemed to have a little bit of a curve on it. Brian Farrell gets it inside, fires David Bray. Remember, he scored a goal here. Joe Sheridan tried the fancy pickup, and it didn't come up at all. Seamus Scanlon is back there, and the free is given against the man from Coro. He was deemed to have been charging out with the ball, but I often wonder should it have been the other way because sometimes it depends on the referee but either way it's a free dead straight in front of the post going to be taken by Kean Ward former All-Ireland College's star in his 17th championship appearance Keen Ward taps it over 
Kerry won two, Mead two points. Kerry are introducing a substitute, and it looks like it's going to be Tommy Welsh. The man that's going off is going to be Dunica Walsh. Into the space. It's not a great ball, but uh, David Bray is working hard. Goes off the boot of Thomas Sullivan. One minute of additional time to be added on in this first half. Kean Ward coming across to take it. While Thomas Sullivan goes back to his position at left corner back. And he'll have a good go at this as well, Marty. Here he is. He's aiming for the post near us and he puts it over the bar. Three points for Kean Ward. Two frees on the sideline. If Joe Canning can do it in hurling, Kean Ward can do it in football. And where we go. And immediately it's Meade that gather possession. Heather Byrne. Down towards uh, Keen Ward. Cleaving King comes from uh, the right half back position. And that is halfway down towards Drumcondra, I'm afraid. That, that really uh, did slice off the boot. He's in two or three different minds. He was going to cross it, then he was going to slice it from left to right. And in the end, he did slice it right out of the ground almost. Dermot Murphy. 34-year-old keeper from Undangan or Dingle. Tommaso Shea, Ty Canelli. Floating this one in, it's big Tommy Walsh. Here's Tommy, here's a goal. His dad was a super sub and certainly he's following in his father's footsteps. Introduced in the first half, here comes the big high ball. Here's big Tommy back of the net simple but brilliant straight one and one with Anthony Moyles and keeper Paddy O'Rourke had no chance Tomas O'Shea Footballer of the Year 2004 took his eye off it here he's fouled so it's going to be a free Colm Cooper. Tommy Welch makes the run. Onto the left boot. Full of confidence now. And there's another score. Tomas O'Shea gathers. Fires Seamus Scanlon. Obviously calling for it. They're floating it in high again. Anthony Moyles gets a touch. Enough to uh, put it away from uh, Tommy Welch. Mickey Bark. He's the man who came in for Stephen Bray, who we believe has a dislocated shoulder. Dislocated collarbone, I'm told. As uh, Mead go into the attack. Mickey Burke, Joe Sheridan coming through the middle. They need a score from him. Aims at the post. White flag going to be raised. It's his first point in this semi-final. Mead are going to introduce another substitute. This is uh, Niall McCaig. And he's coming on for David Bray. Mickey Burke is being sent back out into the half-forward line. Niall McCaig, uh, his father actually is from Galway, plays his club football with Navin O'Mahony's. And that will signal the arrival of Aidan O'Mahony, who's going to come in for Killian Young into the half-back line. That O'Shea, Taig Canella. In towards Declan O'Sullivan, and you can see exactly what was affecting Mead in the first half. The ball skidding off the surface is reflected here again, and that's another poor kick out by Paddy O'Rourke. I know what his intention was, we all do, but just hitting it with too much power. And that uh, mist and rain that we had earlier in the day, very much uh, a factor in the way this game has uh, been played out. Darren O'Sullivan 
He will never forget the time he came on against Tyrone and scored a cracking goal. This one is going all the way! Is it gone in? The umpires don't think so. Let's just watch this again. Paddy O'Rourke saw it late. It was on the line and didn't seem to be over from that camera angle. Ball into the middle to Michael Quirk. Steps by the challenge. But Mark Ward. Ty Canelli. Going for point ever a though. And there it is. Meath are not giving up, even in injury time. Mickey Burke. Backfires Cormac McGuinness. Floating one in. It's two against two here. Joe Sheridan did really well. Tries to get across to Keane Ward. Here's Ward. Goal on. It's there. Dermot Murphy is finally beaten. And it gives Mead fans who stayed in Croke Park a little bit of joy. Ball floated in here, brilliantly gathered by Sheridan. It reached Kieran, Kieran Ward eventually, and Dermot Murphy got a touch, but he couldn't prevent it from going into the back of the net. Yeah, and Sheridan knows what he's doing there. I did get a touch off, uh, I think it was Tommy Griffin got a hand on it. The full-time whistle blows in Croke Park. Kerry will be contesting the All-Ireland Football Final for the sixth year in a row and the eighth time since the 21st century began. It's a repeat of the 2007 All-Ireland Final. It's Cork against Kerry again on September 20th. They'll be meeting for the third time in this championship, but on the third Sunday in September, the biggest prize, the Sam Maguire Cup, will be at stake. The players exchange jerseys, Joe Sheridan and Tommy Griffin, but the ability to score goals is crucial and Kerry had that extra bit of class. Darren O'Sullivan might have been a doubtful penalty. Was the gooch fouled? Was it a penalty? Doesn't matter a hoot because Darren O'Sullivan tucked it away. A goal after one minute of play at the start of the second half by Tommy Walsh. Long ball in. Walsh cracked it home, scored a goal at two points all from play. And while Keen Ward got uh, a goal at the very end to put a bit of respectability on the scoreboard, it's Kerry that's heading to Croke Park yet again. Full-time scoring Croke Park in the second of the All-Ireland football semi-finals. Kerry 2-8, Meath 1-7.